Now see, <clears throat> IAAS is also known as HAAS, that is hardware as a service, okay? Now it is one of the layer of cloud computing platform, okay? And it allows customers to outsource their IT infrastructure, such as servers, networking, processing, storage, virtual machines, and other resources, okay? What do you mean by infrastructure? Infrastructure means physical devices, physical layout, okay? So what are the computer infrastructure? So computer infrastructure contains like CPU, then networking devices, servers, processing, storage, and virtual machine, etc. Okay, and other resources. Okay, so we can say that these are the infrastructure of computer. Okay, so customer access those resources on the internet using as pay as per use model. Okay, means these all resources are available like a service over the internet. So different cloud customer can share those resources through the internet as per their demand and as per the customer use those resources, they have to pay charges, okay? Means like electricity, how much you use electricity, you will have to pay, okay, per unit like that depend upon the uses of those resources, we have to pay bill, okay? Now, so the infrastructure means hardware devices are virtualized and then accessed over the internet, okay? So, now see, means what? Means renting. Uh, here renting is implemented. We take resources on a rent. So the IAS cloud computing platform layer eliminates the need for every organization to maintain the IT infrastructure. Okay. Means what? That uh, the infrastructure, whatever infrastructure is uh, we are accessing from cloud is virtualized. Okay. So the provider of ISP will give us the provider of ISP. The main advantage of using IAS is that it helps user to avoid the cost and complexity of purchasing and managing the physical servers. Here user does not require to manage the physical resources, okay? It is the main advantage of IAS. So we'll see some characteristics of IAS. First characteristics is that resources are available as a service, as we have seen. Then services are highly scalable, okay? Then it is dynamic and flexible. And uh, we can access the IIS services uh, through GUI and API based access available and automotive administrative tasks. Okay. The infrastructure service provider will manage and administrate the resources, whatever service he providing, he manage all the things related to it. So user does not require to do anything. Okay. So we'll see the next.
So IAS service provider provides the following services. The first service is compute. Okay. So compute. <clears throat> so compute. As I told you earlier, this compute. The compute provide virtual CPUs and virtual central processing units and virtual main memory for the virtual machine. Okay, means what? As I explained earlier that hypervisor is there. Okay, it is an abstraction layer. So through on which the multiple VMs can be created. Okay, upon the computer hardware by virtualizing virtualization okay so this compute compute service provides multiple virtual cpus and virtual main memory for the vms that is virtual machine that is provisional to the end users okay means for the end users it provides multiple virtual machines through virtualizing the CPUs and main memory. Okay. Now second component is storage. So IAS provider provides backend storage for storing file. Okay. Infrastructure as a service. So storage is also infrastructure. So storage facility is provided by the IAS. Then third network 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 facility network as a service network facility is also provided by ias and various networking devices virtualized networking devices services are provided like virtualization of router cpu and bridges okay for the vms that is virtual machine then load balancer okay now three now see we all the processing is happened through the internet only so the load balancers are required okay so ias provides load balancing capability at the infrastructure layer okay it also provides provides the balancing capability to capability at the infrastructure okay so these are four services are provided by the IS provider, compute, storage, network, and load balancer. So next, here are some advantages of IAS. The first is shared infrastructure. As we have seen, multiple users share same physical infrastructure by virtualizing it. Okay. Now see here, again here, upon one hardware hypervisor that high abstraction layer is there and depend depend and on the hypervisor the multiple virtual machines are created okay so the both virtual machines sharing the same hardware okay so this is achieved through IAS okay shared infrastructure then web access to the resources we can access those resources over internet, okay? Then pay per use model. As per our uses, we have to pay. How much we use the resource, that much we have to pay only, okay? Like electricity. Then fourth advantage is that IT, IAS focus on core business, okay? It in Rather than in IT infrastructure, it focus on organization's core business. Then on-demand scalability, okay? It is the one of the biggest advantage of IIS. So here, maintenance of software is done by the service provider, okay? Customer don't require to upgrade the software and troubleshoot issues related to the hardware component, okay? All will be uh, managed by this service provider. Okay, this is the advantage of IS. There are some disadvantages of also there. 
security is one of the big issue in IAS. Okay. Then maintenance and upgrade is also one of the disadvantage of IAS. So no, most of the IAS provider are not able to provide 100% security. And uh, actually maintenance and upgrade is done by the IAS provider, okay? But some for some organization, they does not able to provide this facility, okay? Then interoperatively issues. The, suppose we want to migrate from migrate one VM, that is one virtual machine from one IIS provider to the other, other IIS provider, okay? Then vendor lock-in problem can be faced by the IIS provider uh, customers, okay? So these are the disadvantage. Now some IIS providers are there. Amazon Web Service, okay? Amazon Web Service, then second NetMagic, then Rackspace, Reliance Communication, then CFI, then Tata Communication. Okay, Amazon Web Services provides cloud, cloud EC2, MapReduce, Virtual Private Cloud, etc. Then NetMagic, they have their own cloud uh, having name NetMagic IAS Cloud. Then uh, Rackspace having cloud servers, cl cloud files and cloud sites, etc. Then Reliance Communication have their own internet, internet data center. Then CFI have their own IAS. Then Tata Communication have Insta Compute, okay? Insta Compute IAS solution for the IAS, okay? So these are the IAS providers. Now the next service model is platform as a service, that is PaaS. So in PaaS, the platform as a service, okay? So first we'll see what is actually mean by platform as a service actually. Now see, PaaS provides a runtime environment, okay? It allows programmer to easily create, test, run, and deploy web applications, okay? Means it provides us an online platform to develop our project, okay? So we can purchase those application from cloud service provider on the paper use method, okay? And we can access them as per pay, as per access them using the internet connection, okay? <coughs> now see, pass means platform as a service, okay? So, we can create some application. We can deploy that application over the internet, okay? The all environment is provided by the pass provider, okay? Now see, in pass, backend scalability is managed by the cloud service provider, okay? Now see, pass, also includes the infrastructure, okay? Like storage, servers, and networking, and platforms like middleware, development tool, database management system, business intelligence, and more to support the web application lifecycle, okay? Means it contains infrastructure as well as platforms, okay? platform like uh, middleware development tools, then DBMS system, then BI, business intelligent and more, okay? Now see, example of pass is Google App Engine, okay? Now and then Azure, okay? So pass provider provides us the programming languages, application frameworks, databases and other tools also, okay? 
now see programming languages so it provides various programming languages for developers to develop the applications okay so the different languages are java php ruby perl and go these all languages are provided by the pass to develop applications okay now see second application framework so application frameworks are also provided by the pass provider so the frameworks like node js then drupal joomla wordpress spring play rack and chained like this like frameworks are provided by the pass provider then databases so it also provide databases like mongodb redis cleardb okay to communicate with the application then it provides other tools like uh, there are various tools required to test develop and deploy the applications so these tools are also provided by the pass provider okay so pass provides this four services like programming languages to develop the application application framework like drupal wordpress etc then it provides databases to store the data like mongodb fast uh, and then other tools okay to test and deploy the application so next the advantages of pass there are some advantage of pass simplified development okay so simplified development uh, so with we here developer need not required to worry about infrastructure okay so developer can focus on his work only only development okay he does not required to focus on infrastructure okay then here low risk is there okay here developer only need internet connection and one single pc he don't need requ required to install any software or anything okay now see now see some advantages of pass so here developers can focus only on their development okay they did not uh, focus required to focus on existing uh, or uh, worry about the infrastructure management okay then second advantage of pass is that uh, here developer required to require only one pc and internet okay internet connection to start the building the application okay so all the platforms then environment then uh, infrastructure is provided by pass so there is a no need to uh, no need to uh, think about or uh, the infrastructure and all so they only need require required only one pc and internet connection to start to be uh, build the application okay so the third advantage is pre built business functionality okay so already defined business functionality uh, is there okay so that's why uh, users does not require to build anything from scratch okay means what already some business functionalities are defined by the pass providers okay so that's why the developer need not required to develop from scratch okay so they can directly start the project okay now see the next advantage is instant community okay now see the pass vendor uh, provides the online communities communities okay developer community okay where the developer can get ideas to share uh, 
experiences and seek advice from others one of the best example of it is uh, stack flow okay stack overflow stack overflow is a site where uh, it is a community where the uh, when, where we can get uh, help while we are developing any application okay then second advantage uh, then the next advantage is scalability okay from so applications can be scaled from one user to thousand of user without change to the application there is a no limitation that how much user can use the application okay it provides scalability because it uh, the applications are delivered through internet that's why uh, the pass provides scalability to the users okay now here are some disadvantages vendor lock-in so here developers have to write the program according to the platform which is provided by the pass provider okay so migration of, of uh, an application from another pass environment is difficult because it is written using the uh, another vendor's uh, platform okay then data privacy so here corporate data corporate data it the data should be critical or not okay uh, will be private okay but uh, the data is not located within a uh, walls of company because we are a company using cloud so there is a risk in terms of privacy of data okay then third disadvantage is that integration with the rest of the system and application okay so sometimes some application are local and some application are on cloud okay so there is a chances to mixing the data with the data we are using at local uh, my application we can use that data on a cloud and the data we are using on a cloud we can use that data for a local application okay so there is a difficulty for data separation so here different pass providers so the first pass provider is google app engine okay so google app engine provides app identity url page then cloud storage client library and log services okay then second salesforce.com it provides faster implementation rapid scalability customer relationship management services then sales cloud and mobile connectivity and chatter okay then windows azure it provides data storage, compute and security and IoT. IoT is the Internet of Things, okay? Then AppHog. AppHog provides JustCloud.com, SkyDrive and Google Docs, okay? Then OpenShift. It provides Red Hat and Microsoft Azure, okay? Microsoft Azure is an online database, okay? Then Cloud Foundry from VMware, okay? It provides data, messaging, and other services. Okay, these are the different pass providers. Now, this is about pass, platform as a service. Using platform as a service, we can deploy the application over the cloud. We can build, run, test the application over cloud. So for that, user did not require to install any software, any environment on his PC. He just required one single PC and internet connection through which he can able to develop any kind of application, web application using popular programming languages like Java. Then it can provide uh, the pass, provide infrastructure as well as platform so that uh, as well as storage uh, as well as databases also. So we can easily develop application using passing pass okay so the next is SaaS, that is software as a service okay so this is the third and last model 
of service uh, last model of cloud service then software as a service provides the following services okay the first service is business services okay so business service document service mail service and social networks are provided by the saas now so software as a service means what so it also known as on demand software okay whenever user needs software that time the saas provider provides the services so it is a software distribution model in which services are hosted by csp that is cloud service provider okay so these services are available to end user over the internet so the end user do not need to install any software on their devices to access these services okay so see here software are provided by the cloud okay so the end user users does not require to install any kind of software okay they can use any software online okay the best example of it is microsoft powerpoint microsoft word excel then google drive all is this all are the saas okay software as a service okay we can use different kinds of software online okay now see software as a service provides the different kinds of services the first service is business service okay so the saas provides different kinds of business services to start up the business okay uh, the saas business services are erp that is enterprise resource planning crm customer relationship management then billing and sales okay then second document management okay so the saas document management it's a software application okay and it is offered by third party saas providers to create manage and track electronic document okay document management is provided by the saas and it is offered by a third party then its example is slack same 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 page box okay now social networks so the social network sites are used by general public okay there are different social networking site like facebook google twitter etc so facebook google so social network providers social network service provider uses this technology saas for their convenience and handle the general public's information okay now mail service okay to handle the unpredictable number of users and load an email services many email provider offering their service using a saas okay so there are no limit to users of mail services so that's why mail service provider also uses saas for providing services for mail, providing mail services okay now see some advantages of saas saas is easy to buy okay as saas is easy to buy because it is based on monthly fee or annual fee and it is affordable by main users okay so that's why this saas is easy to buy okay then one to many this is the second advantage so the saas services are offered as a one to many means single sir instance of application is shared by multiple users it is called as multi tenant also multiple users can share the single instance that's why it is having one to many relationship then the next advantage is less hardware required for saas 
now see so saas software as a service so we are using software online okay so the setup we required no, we don't required to install any kind of software over local pc so we don't required to invest on additional hardware okay whatever hardware is required by the software is managed by this provide service provider okay low maintenance is required for a saas okay so see software we are using software as online okay online softwares we are using that's why we don't need to install that software we don't need to set up that software and we don't need to maintain that software for the organization okay only the initial setup cost is required for saas okay and it, which is very less as compared to the enterprise software because we required license copy of that software okay so low maintenance cost is required for saas okay now the next uh, disadvantage uh, next advantage is no special software or hardware versions are required okay so now see we are accessing the saas services using the web browser okay we just required internet connection and one single pc okay so we did not require to purchase the software or we did not required to manage any kind of or maintain any kind of software or hardware okay then the next advantage of uh, saas is that multi device support okay so we can access the software services online software services by using any device like mobile phone tablet pcs laptop or thin clients okay now the next advantage is api integration okay we can easily we can easily integrate the software services with the standard apis okay then no client side installation okay so by using internet connection we are accessing that software so we don't need need uh, we don't need to require any kind of software installation okay so this is about this advantages of saas now some disadvantage of saas is there first is a security issue okay so data is stored on a cloud so security is the issue we can lose that data also then latency issue now so now see data and application are stored on a cloud okay so there will be greater latency while interacting with the application compared to local deployment okay because of in internet connection speed is very uh, major issue in this saas okay because if the application and data is stored locally then it al it always faster than cloud okay because uh, yeah, the application and data both are stored on a cloud in case of saas so accessing that data will require more time as compared to local machine okay the next depend uh, disadvantage is the dependency on the internet if our internet connection is strong then we can use the saas if we don't have internet connection we cannot use the saas services so switching between the saas vendors is difficult okay now see transferring very large files over the internet is required when we are switching between the saas vendors and the this task will be very slow because the files are large so that's why it is very uh, difficult to convert one uh, convert from one saas provider to another saas provider okay
So these all are the disadvantage of SaaS. Now see here, different popular SaaS providers are there. So first SaaS provider is First SaaS provider is salesforce.com. It provides on-demand CRM solution, that is customer relationship management solution. Then Microsoft Office 365. It provides online office suit like Excel sheet, etc. etc. Then third, Google Apps. Okay. Google Apps are Gmail, Google Calendar, Docs, and Site. Okay. Go to meeting provides online meeting and video conferencing software. Then constant contact provides email marketing, online survey and event marketing. Okay. Then Oracle CRM provides CRM application, CRM related application. And Workday ENC provides human capital management and payroll and financial management systems. Okay. So these are the popular SaaS providers. I think out of this Google Apps, you all of you familiar with this Google Apps and go to meetings. Okay. So this is about SaaS. Now here some advantages of cloud computing. Okay. So we'll see the advantages one by one. 